and most of the deadlines fall in September. So that is why I am so pleased that you are here, because I am hoping after you attend this meeting, you learn a little bit more about the application process and a little bit about the actual fellowship experience, that um, you will set up a time to, to meet with me individually. My email address is dmgagnon at amherst.edu. And um, what we'll do is we will meet, we will talk about what you are interested in, and one of the things that I'm going. With, I'm only. The, I'm only only going to talk for a short time because I'm more interested in having them talk to you about um, the application experience. But there are a couple of myths that I'd like to dispel. Um, one is that you have to be an athlete in order to be a Rhodes Scholar. That is not the case. Um, there are many Rhodes Scholars that have never done one thing that is athletic. And sometimes I think people think that maybe you need to be the president of your class, you need to have done some different sorts of things that maybe would be considered more typical leadership qualities in order to be able to apply for one of these awards. And the truth of the matter is, really what you need to be is passionate. You need to figure out what it is that you want to do you need to be able to get that information down on paper. That's one of the things that Kelly's going to talk to you about is writing a personal statement. And I also want to point out um, that there is going to be a workshop following uh, this event on doing that sort of writing. Um, but the most important thing is for you to really think about what do you want to do. And in this case, if it's something that you're going to be applying for this year after Amherst College, um, if you're not ready to go to graduate school, but maybe you would feel okay about studying on a Fulbright in another in a foreign country, traveling or doing some sort of research on a Watson, um, there are so many opportunities out there for you. And Tony Claudino from the Fulbright Foundation is even going to tell you about not only are there opportunities there every day. There are new opportunities, especially through the Fulbright program, um, with different countries signing on for the Teaching Assistantship Awards, which Adeline's going to talk to you about spending a year teaching in Spain. And she just was up in my office saying to me, she, if, she, if she could, she'd still be in Spain, because she had such an amazing experience doing that. Um, but what you need to do is learn about the application process what you need to do and what you're probably going to find out through some people that are sitting here and who have won this, that you do end up spending quite a bit of time in the Office of Fellowships. Um, it is a lot of work to apply for a fellowship, um, and that's why whatever you can do over the summer will make this experience a little bit uh, more agreeable for all of us, because if you can come back in September having spent some time working on a personal statement and a so the other important thing in a handout that we are giving you today is about writing, having, requesting to have a letter of recommendation written on your behalf. I would like you, if you are going to apply for one of these, to talk to your professors now. Let them know you're considering doing this. Let them have the opportunity to think about it a little bit over the summer so that when you are requesting this letter for this early September deadline, it's not going to take them by surprise. And in the interim, you can send them, a, send them a synopsis of your proposal. Let's say if you're planning to study, do research in Germany on a Fulbright, you can write to them and tell them what it is that you're proposing to do so that they can put that into the letter for you. These letters are, are different from the types of letters that they are used to writing. They are used to writing letters that would be sending you off to graduate school. And for things like Watson Fellowships, when they're sending you off to swim with sharks or um, do some other amazing things that, that you might come up with, uh, you probably, I don't know if you've heard, but Amherst College has actually had more Watson Fellowships than any other school since the beginning, since the foundation started giving out Watson Fellowships. Some Watson Fellows do things that are more um, concentrated on things like social justice. 
some other Watson fellows, if this one didn't happen to be somebody from Amherst, but I love to use it as an example, a young woman from Harvey Mudd, um, she was a structural engineer, and she spent the year writing on roller coasters. So Watsons can be pretty amazing, and this year we do have a Watson fellow, Callista McRae is here, and uh, she will be uh, joining us in the lobby for refreshments, and also Susan Hewlett is here. She has won a Fulbright to Germany. So we're just hearing about the, our students this year applying for these awards. So far, uh, five of our Fulbright applicants have heard that, that they have won. We have two alternates that we're hoping that will. Uh, it's not unusual for our applicants who are designated alternates.